Welcome to Around Town, the show that provides information on North Andover and the surrounding towns in the Merrimack Valley. Today's guest, Carol Mashad, Executive Director of the North Andover Historical Society, and Stan Limbert, the President of the North Andover Historical Society. Welcome, welcome. Thanks Thank for coming you. to Thanks the show. For having us. Carol, how long have you been uh, working at the Society? Well, uh, Jim, I came here in March, on March 1st, 1988, so 28 and a half years wow. since I've been there. Um, as you can see, my title is Executive Director, but it's a much more diverse job than that because mm -hmm. we're such a tiny organization. I really am the only full-time employee, and my two primary jobs is to be the director, but also to be the educator and, and program director. So you wear a lot of hats. I wear a lot of hats, exactly. Yes, yeah. Wow. And uh, Stan, how long have you been president? Uh, I've been president for two years, and uh, I hope to be president for a couple more to continue with some of the work we're doing, and right. some of the activities that we've started up, and we're doing just great with some of the things. So you enjoy being the president? I do then. very much so. I think it's a very, this is a very worthwhile organization for our community. I think it's providing a very, very needed and worthwhile service for North Andover, and I think people are, are interested in the work we're doing. and. More and more they seem to be coming to us and wanting to participate in our activities, so it's good for us. Yeah, that's a nice thing, though. I mean, historical, we have a lot of historical sites in the town. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's nice that you people keep up with it and let yeah. people know what yeah. it is. Um, Carol must keep you really busy, huh? Yeah, I know yeah. she does. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, um, what are some of the sites around town that are really historical to us? Um, well, we can start with the Parson Barnard House, which we own. So we don't own all of the historical sites in the town. Uh, and I have to mention that the town itself has a volunteer committee, uh, the Historical Commission, who really oversees all of the town-owned sites or, uh -huh. or the town's interest in history. Uh, the Historical Society, though, does own the Parson Barnard House, which um, actually I just showed today to a group of third graders. and. Up until 1950, and starting at least as far back as 1829, everyone thought it was the Simon Bradstreet House. Right, yep. And the Historic <coughs> Society bought it in 1950, and everyone thought, this is wonderful. In fact, the town shipped in to help buy it. And for five years, it, they owned the Governor Bradstreet House. And then in 1955, when one of the Stevens ancestors, her husband had retired from his practice in Boston, came back, and she got very interested in it, and she hired the architectural historian Abbott Lowell Cummings to come out and tell them what a great find they, find they had. Wow. And he said, well, you, it is a great find. This is wonderful. It's a great house. However, I have some kind of bad news. And they went, what is that? The house was built 30 years after Anne died. And so therefore, after that, <laughs> Simon had moved away and oh. wasn't living here. So that was kind of a shock to everybody. But the great thing, and I think this was, to me, somebody who came here from, I'm not from North Andover, I came here from Connecticut for the job, is the fact that they embraced what could have been really a devastating moment. And with his help, they developed a very, very forward-thinking interpretation of the house. So if you come and see it today, and we hope you do, it's open the first Saturday of um, the months June through October, between 11 and 3 for free and we invite everyone to come, nice. is you see <coughs> four different rooms <coughs> that are interpreted over four different periods. So right. it starts when the house was built in 1715 and ends in the year 1830. And it's just an exciting way to explore history and do a little time travel when you come down to see us. Yeah, that must be nice going through time right. like that. I like stuff like that. Right. It's interesting, very it, interesting. It is. And I should mention the other, probably the most historic site, which we don't own, the town of North Andover does, is of course the old burying ground on Academy Road, mm -hmm. because that is of course where the town of Andover began. I mean, North Andover, of course, is contains the original settlement of Andover, not the town that has the name today. Right. And so if you wanted to put a big X, as I tell the kids, where it began, it's right there at the old burying ground in Court Street. So Court Street was was essentially the first main street of the compact village. All the house lots had to be within a certain distance of the meeting house, and the meeting house was there. And of course, once the first person died, who happened to be John Osgood, then of course you need a burying ground, and right. that's how they laid that out. So that is probably one of the most important sites. 
And here's where the historic commission as part of the town has worked really hard for the last over 30 years yeah. to, to help preserve that. So North Denver is very fortunate having a lot of not just the historic site, but other active people in town who take care of the historic site. That sites. is, that's nice. Volunteers yes. are always nice. Everybody, we all need volunteers exactly. on, on all the committees we have in town. Exactly. Um, Stan, yes. I meant to ask you this before. What are your duties as president? Well, um, a lot of it has to do with uh, coordinating uh, volunteer activities, um, working with board members uh, on various <coughs> projects that we have, fundraising. You know, we in, we're involved in fundraising. We typically have an annual event in June that we use as a fundraiser and also to honor people in town. We've been giving out the Lifetime Preservation Awards for the last few years to uh, residents of North Andover who made a significant contribution to either historical or open space preservation in our community. Um, and, and, you know, just trying to uh, increase the visibility of the society and the community um, uh, so that people know what we have to offer and, right. and avail themselves of that. The other uh, activity I've been involved with and that sort of got me involved with the Historical Society is I've been a member of the North Andover School Committee for a number of years. I heard, yes. And uh, <coughs> it uh, seemed to me uh, several years ago that there might be a, an opportunity to do more of what Carol Majahad has done for a number of years, which is our educational program. She's, you know, really been provided a, a wonderful opportunity for many of our students, primarily elementary school students, to come and uh, do some hands-on history um, mm -hmm. at the society and really get a flavor for what it was like to live in colonial times, if nothing else. Oh, yeah. And it seemed to me that we might have the opportunity to do more of that, to bring more of that history into our public schools, um, maybe using modern technology right. or, you know, the, trying to use some sort of digital media, you know, video to get into, to bring more of that into our schools. So I got interested in that. And so as soon as I expressed an interest, Right away, I was made a board member. Yeah, it didn't take really? them more than That's all a takes. minute or two <laughs> to become a board member. And then shortly after that, they said, well, if you're a board member, why don't you become president? And so here we are, you know. But um, we're really, I think we're really uh, making some dramatic progress in that direction um, of trying to expand our educational uh, offerings to the community as well as start starting down this digital path right. to try to provide that same uh, kind of information directly into the classrooms. As uh, you may or may not be aware, we've really done a lot of work in our public schools to increase the uh, number of computers and the uh, connectivity we have in our public schools. So we're getting to the point now where teachers and students would be able to avail themselves of, of digital information right in the classroom without ever leaving. Now, I certainly wouldn't want them to miss out on the hands-on history of coming to the society and being able to make butter and other such things. Really? You know, learn to spin and yeah. all kinds of fun activities <coughs> that Carol offers when they come. But it is an opportunity for teachers to be able to use some of uh, the historical information directly in their classrooms without, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just as part of the curriculum without having to go anywhere and do anything special. So right. that's kind of our, our, our vision about where we'd like to take this. and. You know, our thought is that if we make it easy enough for educators to be able to use the information, they'll they'll do that. They'll want to do that. Right, um, right. So that's part of where we hope to head uh, with all of this. And um, seem, things seem to be moving in that direction very well. We've, that's we've excellent. That's good. Strides. That's a good. So you guys are doing a really good thing. That's the nice thing for the town. Right. Um, funding for your society. Do you have to raise your own money like for, uh, like you said, you have... Um, uh, raffles or mm -hmm. uh, fundraisers. We we have an endowment which helps partially support the right. our activity. You know, we're a private organization. Right. We're not part of the town. Right. There's often some misunderstanding. They think the historical society is somehow part of the town, like the library or something. Right. And we're not. Yeah. We're a separate private organization, tax exempt organization. Yeah. But uh, we have we we do have some endowed funds that we've gotten over the years from you know various right. uh, people yep. who have been interested in the society but it's not certainly not enough no. to run the society the way we do lot. so we we have uh, we have uh, donors every year that provide ad additional funds we get grants um, nice. and we have fundraisers yeah. um, but you know we're would always like to 
we had more, we could do more. Right. You know, the the, the more people don't realize that. People don't really, it takes a lot to run, right. run an organization, it, it especially does. like yours. It's run by volunteers, mm -hmm. and it takes a lot. It really takes a lot. Right. But you guys are doing a great job. Well, I should say, we also, we also have paid staff. And so yeah. And then we're taking care of um, and so much that people see beyond, you know, beyond that, there's so much you don't see. So right. we, we are actually always scenes. collecting history of North Andover ongoing, particularly right. in archival form. So, you know, articles or, you know, the way they open something new and we might get whatever, like the mug they put out. We'll right. save that. Yep. Uh, T-shirts from events and things like that, things you wouldn't think of. We're always looking for photographs. So we, you know, we have, we had a man come in the other day and donate photographs of his family because they lived on, on Harkaway Drive. Mm -hmm. And they worked at the Stevens Mills and they just had, just oh, like you would have, but see, that's mm -hmm. so yep. exciting because it's so, it has changed so much. Oh yeah. So those are the things we have. And we have a whole three dimensional collection of, you know, things like furniture and pottery and all of that. Really? And mm -hmm. when you come to either one of our sites, either the headquarters in the old center or the Parson Barn House, you're seeing uh, an iceberg, a third above and two thirds. We're more like one eighth is up here and right. seven eighths are, you know, is somewhere else, and we try to rotate it out. So right. it's, you know, it's it's something that you know we we think is really important, and we work really hard to do. But you know, it is everybody's history, and we mm. hope that mm. you know more people will support us either monetarily or volunteers. That's we it. always can use more volunteers. That's right. You never have enough volunteers. Never. We know that here at the CAM. We're always looking <laughs> right. for volunteers. <laughs> That's right. But uh, we do f they do great here. They do a great job. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you, you, so you teach children how to spin and churn butter? Among other things, yes. Really? Yes. Oh, yes. I The first job I got here when I came here 28 years ago, I have to say, I didn't know how to spin when I came here, but I had never made butter in my life. <laughs> but um, I inherited programs that people before me had started. And I don't think, if you, if you lived in North Andover and you went to elementary school here, um, in the last, say, actually since 1972, uh, at some point, if you weren't sick that day, you have made butter. So I've had <laughs> wow. adults come and say, you know, they don't remember the historic society said when we made butter, and then everybody remembers it. It was probably one of the most iconic things that they've ever done. And we still make butter with children today. They um, must not love every it. group that comes in, but we make sure that every school, if, they, if more than one class comes, one of those classes makes butter wow. as part of their curriculum. That's so. really, that's really, really good. You're teaching the kids. Uh, it's, that's an excellent thing. We, uh, I would just add that we're just in the process now of uh, doing some renovation on the Parson Barnard Barn. You see mm -hmm. it on Osgood Street yep. as you drive down the street there. Yep. And we hope to be able to use that uh, space once it's uh, refurbished for f some more education, more hands-on uh, education for both students and adults where people can come and try out different crafts and mm -hmm. we might do some weaving in there we might do some uh, uh, like colonial era carpentry wow. some different kind of crafts it will give us a space which we don't currently have right. where people can get more hands-on kinds of activities and it does seem as Carol's pointing out that people really love the hands-on activity you know they really like that and that seems to uh, be a real attraction for them as well as as well as often very memorable you know people really remember those kinds of interactions right. so we're really uh, tr we're going to be you know really uh, hopeful that that space will give us some opportunities to provide some new kinds of programs for the community yeah both both students and adults and it's in a wonderful location because it's within walking distance of you know three or four of our schools so yes you know, yes. no bus required. Just walk down the street right. and you're right there. So yeah. we're really looking forward to that as a new opportunity. And we hope, you know, next spring, summer to have that online and start uh, uh, giving the community some ideas of some of the activities we're going to try to be doing in there. So that's another That'd great be nice. thing. Yep. The other, you know, our, one of our other expenses, of course, is we do maintain the buildings themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, that's our responsibility. Yep. The yep. Carson Barnard House and Barn the Johnson Cottage, where the headquarters are, the, the small Hay Skills building. So we do have some, some buildings that we also maintain uh, we, uh, and operate. You know, yep. they have utilities and all of that. So just another one of our expenses that we have to think about really? being able to support and fundraise for. So anyway. That's, that's a lot. That really is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, tell us about the uh, new exhibit uh, at the North Andover Historical Society.
Well, there's actually, there's we exhibit. can put an S on that. There's actually exhibits. exhibits right? Oh, okay. So we just had installed um, last week uh, a little mini exhibit about um, Andover, England, and the connection between the people who came here from that area in England, not all from Andover, England, but the, the surrounding towns, and uh, you know what early settlers of this Andover came from there and sort of how it impacted. And so that's kind of a fun... It's a little tiny exhibit, but it's sort of a fun amount of information. Uh, the exhibit that will be opening just in time for our holiday open house on Sunday, December 4th, between 1 and 3, which is free, and we invite everybody to come. It's That's really excellent. nice. You walk by. We have, you know, you walk through. It's not a big time commitment. You can spend as much or little time as you want. We have food. Um, but we're going to have an exhibit in on um, basically touring in the early 20th century called Wish You Were Here and the impact of the automobile. And so we, when we were talking about this with the exhibit committee, you know, first we said, oh, we'll talk about people going overseas, and well, that really included only a few people. But it's amazing when you look at the photographs and the diaries of people who lived in North Andover in the, you know, between 1900 and 1930, how many people just travel, whether they had their own car, mm -hmm. whether they took a trolley, they started having bus tours going to Salisbury Beach. Wow. I don't know how many people know that Chickering Road was built during the early 1930s because they were tired of all the tourists going by Academy Road and Osgood Street, so they decided <laughs> they would give them their own path to get to the beach. Wow. So that's how that all developed. And so there's a whole wonderful story about how that made people on the go and the tea houses that started springing up in places. So we hope people will come down and look at that. And the third thing, and this is a much longer project, is we are working on our galleries at the headquarters building. Mm -hmm. uh, many people will stop by during the week and that whole downstairs area is free. Wow. And we're working on an exhibit in the back that's going to talk about, um, first of all, textiles and the importance of North Andover history quite a bit about the mills, but we also hope to talk about North Andover in the 20th century and particularly the impact of Western Electric and how that oh, really? changed yes. the entire life, not just in North Andover, but the whole Merrimack Valley. Well, that would be interesting. So, yes. you know, we're, we're, that's slowly going because of the size of this map, but we have some things back there. Right now we have a lot of hands-on textile things for people to come down on the 4th and enjoy. So we hope people will. And then, of course, Johnson Cottage will be open that day as well. So we hope people will visit us. That's and excellent. And I just going. wanted to add one thing. We have a small gift shop where we have yes. appropriate gifts, uh, books, uh, some artworks, uh, some crafts. So it's uh, also an excellent opportunity for people to do some Christmas shopping. Excellent. Perfect time of the year. So yep. if they come down to our free open house, we'll have some refreshments. Wow. Um, and they can look in our gift shop and see if there's something they might want to give uh, friends or family. Uh, Excellent. There. So when is the open house again? December fourth. December fourth. Between 4th. one and three. So just show up anytime between a little before one, and you can come in right at two fifty nine. <laughs> yeah, that's so <laughs> nice. Still, that's that's excellent. When I've always been uh, curious about this. When did not the Andover Andover split and make not the Andover, or was it? Well, what was first? I well, mean, well, okay. So it was all Andover. All and of so Andover. So there's actually two splits. So around 1709, the town, which was gigantic, remember all of South Lawrence, um, all of Andover, all of North Andover, and in 1709, they really weren't quite sure where the boundaries were. You have to think about the fact that, you know, today we have maps, we have markers, we all know. Every town jealously guards every little inch. Uh, during the early years of the 1700s, uh, representatives from each town did what they call perambulations, or walking, around the borders, and they put stakes in to say, we own this, we own that. So mm -hmm. for the 50 years before that, really no one knew where the town borders were. It was sort of, where did you say you were going to go to church, that's the town you belong to. Um, so in 1709, I mean, just think about if you lived in down near Haggett's Pond, like all the way down where 93 comes in, off 133, and you had to walk to the old center to go to church, not once, but twice a week. Yeah. And you had to sit through a service that was six hours long, and then you had to walk back. That is a long way. Sure so is. So the people who lived in the south and the west part of the, of the settlement decided they wanted their own church a little closer. And there was a big argument where it was going to be. But finally, in 1709, we split into the North, or original, and the South Parish. And in the South Parish, they first created what was called Andover Village. Now, 
everyone back then understood Andover Village meant this was the second settlement today, that, that concept sort of lost. And then by 1826, the West Parish split off the South Parish. So now we had three parishes. But finally, in 1855, a series of things happened. And there were two actually competing petitions that went to the general court. One was from the Merrimack District of the North Parish, so basically downtown North Andover. And they were petitioning to be split off of Andover altogether because they wanted to become part of the brand new, beautiful city of Lawrence. Think about it. They were the mill district. They wanted to be part of this new modern city. They didn't want to be stuck with the farm town. Wow. Same time petition was put in by the South Park of town saying they wanted to be the town. And in 1855, we haven't gotten to 1876 yet with this real clear idea of American history, but for them it was important to retain the name Andover because they had the Andover Theological Seminary and mm -hmm. they felt that that name was important to them. Um, there's not a whole lot recorded about how the North Parish felt about that, but as it turned out, they accepted having, you know, they had got paid $500 from the South Parish to reincorporate. They chose the name North Andover. We don't know exactly why, except they were the northern part. And I think because that petition from downtown was denied, and that had been called North Andover since at least 1840, because it was the north geographical part of Andover, wow. I think that was sort of a concession to that group, that we'll just call ourselves North Andover. Right. So as I said, it's a series of splits. And what's interesting is it was one of the last of the old towns to split into two different towns. Right, yeah. right. Wow, that's very interesting. Now, $500 in 1855. A lot of money. It would be a right. lot of money now. I mean, it's, oh, not, yeah. it's not a million, but right. it's uh, tens that's of right. thousands, if not hundreds of thousands. Right. In that would be a dollars, lot of I money, would, I would think. definitely. So, right. yep. You know, I, uh, my impression was, too, that, you know, while this had become a mill town, there was still kind of a, the farming background to this entire area. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to, a, to a, a sort of coming at it from a farming point of view, $500 was a lot of money, right? Sure I mean, was. It's like, that's good money. We'll, yep. You can have the name and, yep. you know, we're right. good, right? right. So, yeah. so that's interesting, yeah. Yeah, we had mills in town. We had the... Right. Davis and Ferber. Davis and Ferber. We had the Sutton Mills. We had the North, at that point, North Andover Mills that later got renamed the Osgood Mills. Right. Um, there was Stevens Mill was the first one, 1814. Look at that. Um, in fact, North Andover, if, you, if, if everyone's familiar with where the North Andover thrift shop is today, we, yep. that is the 1802 Schofield Carding Mill. And it is probably, at least to my knowledge, other than ones that have been moved to museums, right. Uh, that is like the last surviving one in at least eastern Massachusetts. That is interesting. And, you know, it's great now that it is the thrift shop because people can go inside. Now, it's been changed considerably, but the fact that you can walk on the ground, you can read, they put up some wonderful signage down there. Yeah. And you can go Ooh. in the building and kind of get a sense of the scale. It's just a really important thing. So there's another historic building right. that's being preserved in a different sort of way. Right, right. And, you know, I would mention, speaking of the mills, another area that's very important is the mill district downtown where the all the old davis and ferber buildings right. have all been restored and are being beautiful. actively used they're beautiful yep. Yep. and you can go in because of the different businesses right there's a little lobby in east mill and they actually have the old turbine room when the mill was converted to electricity look at and that. they left that intact so you can go in and look at it so i mean north andover really has a lot of opportunity for people to go in and experience history really? beyond the historical society I, I bet you a lot of people never even realize that either i never realized it and i've lived here uh over 50 years and it's like it's very very interesting i want to check out some of the, this the um it, it's important we always try to emphasize the fact that uh, while people often think that Davis and Ferber, those buildings, were a mill. They were not. They right. were a place where equipment for mills right. was manufactured. It right. was one of the it was one of the only companies that was not associated with one of the large mills that um, manufactured equipment right. as, as a standalone business. So right. it's a very unusual uh, enterprise here in our town that, you know, and the buildings there have been very uh, lovingly preserved. I mean, some of the the work, the brickwork on yeah. the Davis and Ferber buildings, is some of the best you'll ever see in any mill building in our area. So, <coughs> it's been a great opportunity for us to 
preserve a, a historic resource that we had. But it's also, we're also trying to educate our community to understand that that was really not a mill, it was something completely different. It was a, a, right. a you know, a manufacturing operation right. that shipped yes. uh, mill equipment worldwide. They had a worldwide customer base and shipped equipment all around the world for other textile mills. So right, right. We want people to know that. Interesting, very, very interesting. Um, okay, now I heard you say about something about Lawrence, South Lawrence, mm -hmm. was that part of Andover? Right. So I never knew that either. So Lawrence was created, you know, of course, it's a model city. It was created, and some investors actually bought up most of this, what was called Moose Plains, mm -hmm. which was part of that West Parish that had split off in 1826. But again, once the two towns split, became part of today's right. Andover. Uh, and then there was part of what, if North Andover had existed then, would have been North Andover. Right. And so that part, so all of South Lawrence was really at one point part of Andover. And then, so Lawrence was split off first. 1845, they, they, they split off. Right. Eight, by 1852, they opened up as a city. And, you know, one of the most interesting books, and it was a novel, but they had a lot of history. It was City in Amber, and it talked about how Lawrence was built, and it had different stories going on. Right. But they talk about building Lawrence, and, of course, they had to use the depot in North Andover. So that's, of course, where the nearest train depot was. Right. And then as soon as they completed the city, they moved the depot, <laughs> the main <laughs> depot over to Lawrence. And that was really the North Andover didn't have one for a while. Then right. They finally put in a passenger right. depot, depot yeah. uh, a little later on. Yeah. But, you know, th just the way all of the towns yeah. are interconnected and the Very history interesting. is all the same is just, you know, Very interesting. great. Yeah. You know, it makes for great collaborations between all the different towns right. here and sharing the history. Right. Wow. Well, we're out of time. That was a quick uh, 30 minutes. <laughs> and I want to thank you very much for being our guest. We had Carol and we had Stan uh, from the Historical Society. And uh, you've done a fantastic job. You are so knowledgeable. And you also need some volunteers, some right. more volunteers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Anybody that wants to go down to volunteer, uh, it's very interesting. You'll find out some uh, nice historical stuff about the town and North Andover. So That's if right. you're not doing anything or extra time, go down and see Carol right. and Stan, and you can volunteer uh, for us doing some uh, chores around the town. <laughs> You'll find it very interesting. I got to go down there. I'm telling you, I got to yeah, see this. Do. I, I'm ashamed come. to say I've never been there, <laughs> but I will go. People, go down to the Historical Society. Take a look. It's very, very interesting. Okay. And December 4th. On right. December 4th, don't forget. 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. 1, 1 to 3. Down. Free right. open house. That's right, the open check house. Check out our gift shop. Definitely right. check out their gift shop. Right. And before I leave, I just want to remind people out there uh, that in December, uh, excuse me, November 26th, which is a week from Saturday, if this airs before that, is our Santa Claus parade in town. Uh, it's a really going to be a big parade this year. So come on down, see Santa, and enjoy yourself. Well, thank you for uh, tuning in. And I will see you next time around town.